Chloe Nicole. Whoa. Just tell the person next to you, say, are you alive? Give them a little prod. You alive. Praise the name of Jesus. Whoa. Whoa. Hallelujah. Whoa. Hallelujah. Joe, do you want to just very briefly just share what happened on Friday night? What, what, what you felt happened on Friday night when we... Um, what it was like, I think we came into a, uh, a thin place. Yeah. I was talking with Fiona before we started the meeting with it. We just felt like, you know, it's like God's very close sometimes and doesn't seem to be. And I know that can be to do with our feelings and where we are personally. But I think corporately, certainly, I think, if anyone was asked what was going on, there was a sense of God being really, really close. And then when you played... Uh, what was originally going to be about 10 minutes, I think it went to about 20 minutes because it was so amazing. You played t about 20 minutes of um, some teaching uh, from the Apostle from uh, uh, Miami. Uh, and it was, I mean, I'm 65, I've been around a long time and I've never heard that kind wow. of teaching about intercession, wow. about getting the burden. And I just felt really impacted. Um, I know this is going to make people laugh, but... I've been in, I felt burdened for a long time, but I felt increasingly burdened about Brexit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, because yeah. if, we, if we go the wrong way, mm -hmm. and it's up to us, it's like God is saying, I, I've appointed you with authority on the earth. That's right. And especially with tongues, he needs people mm -hmm. to pray. So we're praying God's prayers. That's why he's given us that gift. Well, thank you, Scott and Fiona, for the insight you've given about that amazing gift wow, in this church. Yeah. You've got tremendous revelation, but it went deeper for me on Friday. Wow. And I just encourage people, guys, you know, you've got to come Friday night. Yeah. If you're part of this church and you can really make it and if you've not got anything on, don't watch telly. You know? Or if you're a couple... You know, one one comes even if you can only come once a month. If, if you know, if life's really busy with kids and stuff, try and get something arranged. If one of you can come, and then the next time, just just come. Amen. It's great. It's, it's great. just brilliant. It really was amazing. Yeah. And it's not. It wasn't down to you, and you know, even though what you do is brilliant, uh, but it was just the presence of God was really. Yeah, and I think we're in that season, you know, and it's kind of if you want more. You, you can have it, but we've got to come to the, the well and drink. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We want to drink. We want to drink. Hallelujah. <coughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Hmm. Well, since we received our ordination in Miami from our apostle and came back, we've kind of been ministering along the lines of the heart. And fatherhood and then we had Pastor Adam come and that was quite a, a memorable evening if you were here it was a good night of dancing for me <laughs> in the spirit <laughs> fatherhood the fatherhood of God it just a little recap on some of the things there's there's two basic words for father in the New Testament there is Abba which is the affectionate term for for, for, means daddy and there is pater which which speaks of the father's lordship the father being in charge the father being the one who shapes you guides you disciplines you and we need both we need the affection of god but we need the father the, the word father means progenitor it means somebody it means the, the creator of a tribe it means somebody who infuses a tribe or a family with his own DNA, with his own spirit. When you when you have a relationship with the Father, and, and when you have a relationship with the Father, he puts you on his shoulders. You start life from his shoulders. And we live in a culture that doesn't have anything of fatherhood. Just never mind the rest of the United Kingdom. Just take this housing estate next to church here, yeah, at East End Park. The problem with East End Park is fatherhood. And in the last book of the Old Testament, in the book of Malachi, it talks about that there's the spirit of Elijah, there's going to be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of Elijah, 
that will turn the hearts of the children to the fathers, lest not strike the, the land with a curse. And what it's saying is that there's going to be a restoration of fatherhood. And without the restoration of fatherhood, there's a curse on the land. There's a curse on our country at the moment. There's all kinds of confusion. So not having fatherhood means that. And even as Christians, look, we can be heaven bound Christians but who knows you can be on your way to heaven not know that at the cross Jesus bore your sicknesses carried your pain and be carrying sickness and disease that Jesus paid for still going to heaven you can be still going to heaven and still carrying guilt and, and condemnation for things that Jesus died for you're still going to heaven and people can be living lives where the, the, as believers Whole churches can be without fatherhood. And so there's a sense of orphanhood. Where there's orphanhood, the curse is operation. People are wandering. People have no identity. And people have no purpose. And I, my, my passion, my heart for God's people is that they, number one, find their identity in Him and they find their purpose. If you'd come along Friday night and gotten into the realm of intercession where, we, where God took us, then that's your purpose. Because any calling in your life that doesn't come from that is going to be a dead work anyway. It's just going to be based on our gifting, our personal charisma. But what's happening, I believe, in this day and age, I'm convinced that we're in the last days. And we're in the last days. And you know, praise God, I'm not afraid of that. And the Bible talks about, and this is, the Bible talks that in, before the great and terrible day of the Lord, there's going to be a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. And if you look at the scriptures, the time that we're in now, the day of Pentecost began all those years ago. And Pentecost is a two-day feast. Pentecost is a two-day feast. And a day is as a thousand years. And day two is nearly over. And if you were, without going into it, if you were to take the Hebrew calendar and the Gregorian calendar, our calendar, we've roughly, I believe we've got about 15 years before the return of the Lord. It's in our lifetime. The return of Jesus Christ. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But he's coming soon. It's like, if I had a driving test coming up, if I had an exam, I'd, I'd be thinking about it. Why is the church not thinking about this I believe it's God's will to prosper people I believe God wants to prosper us to bless us but somehow the bless me bless me self love message is, is all that's about self love it's going through that it's, called, it's actually based on psychology where you go through different layers until you self actualize it's actually demonic teaching that's, that's a clue it's based on yeah. It's demonic teaching. And you know what? The gospel goes like this. We die to self, actually. We find our identity in him. But the church, I believe, is a remnant in this land. There's a remnant across the world and there's a remnant in this land. And how do you know if you're remnant? Remnant seems to suggest that there's a tiny minority of people. Maybe in a sense there is, but remnant means that Somehow you have never quit. You're still going. That's right. <laughs> yeah. It's like you, you scratch yourself and think, I'm still going for God. I'm not just a Christian, amen. But I, I'm still longing, I'm passionate, I believe in revival and it's like it's like am I stupid or something? I've been going at this for twenty years, twenty-five years, and it's like I still believe it. I got saved in nineteen ninety six and everything was revival, revival and praise God. And, and I'm, as you can tell, I'm from further north. And I remember the outpouring in Sunderland. It was wonderful. And you think we're still going. And everything we've been through and all the dreams and the visions. Hello, who, who got, who's been touched by God in, in the moves of God and God spoke and big visions in your life? And you've got the dreams. And you've been through hell. And you've probably maybe lost friends and people you are running with have quit the race or they've compromised or they've gone to 
too seek a sense of the church is just about being cool and image. Sorry, I don't have skinny jeans on today, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, though. <laughs> the God is transforming this church. It's all right to look good, it is, honestly. I'm 44 and I look better than I did 20 years ago. <laughs> Listen, this. Ephesians 4, 17, way here. It says, this, this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. And we're living in a time and there is a great falling away happening. There's a great falling away happening. Not just nationally and internationally, it leads. People who you've known are compromised. And pray for them. But is it, and yet this isn't about, oh, this isn't a very positive message. Everything has to be positive, 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 because that's be good marketing. And this might not, this is an absolutely glorious message because we're living in the last days and I believe I'm looking at a remnant people right now Amen. everything you've been through you're still going for it naturally you, 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 you just I don't know your bananas actually naturally speaking it's like why didn't you just give up by now because there's a life in you that won't quit the same life that raised Jesus from the dead and God has been dealing with us in getting us not to walk like those who don't have a covenant with God, i.e. the Gentiles. Getting us out of the futility of our mind. Getting us out of those ways. And listen, the Holy Spirit, oh, I'll tell you, if you I, I, I saw this on Friday night. God wants you, basically, for the greatest revival that's ever, what do you call revival? The greatest outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The greatest outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The end time outpouring of the Holy Spirit. That's what you're around for. That's why you're still here. That's why you've suffered and been broken. That's why you've gone through some of the things you have. Maybe some of it's even been your own fault. Hey, but you're still here. Because you're remnant. And so, what? listen, this is what we've got to ask ourselves. Whatever we're going through. In life, we go through struggles, we go through tests. Number one is not, how can I relieve myself of this challenge? How can I feel happier? And listen, God has good things for us, trust me. But the question we should ask is, am I in the will of God? Am I in? In my life now, in where I've been, am I in the will of God? I need to align myself with the will of God. I need to bind myself to Him. And being in the will of God is not always that easy. And it shouldn't be, I need relief of the struggles I'm going through. I need to be in the will of God. And this is where some people I've known, you've known, have lost their way. Because in those times, there's sort of personal relief. Not knowing that when they get the personal relief, that cycle is going to come back round and it's going to hit them hard. A, a, a guy spoke to me recently and he was on fire for God and he's not in the will of God now. He's not. And he knows he's not. But he says this. He says, I've got no spiritual problems. That's what he said. He says, I've got no spiritual conflict at all in my life. My life's easy. But he's not in the will of God. Of course he's got no spiritual conflict. When we read the scriptures and we see God's people that go through conflict, they go through conflict within and without. It doesn't really sit well with the field, the kind of how to be a better you self-actualization teaching. But it's the truth. And my heart breaks for people like that. And my friend, if you're listening to this message, because I know you do listen online, I'm not judging you. But people like that can be getting set up 
by the enemy. In the will of God, even if you go through the hardships and trials, you can have shalom. That's the most important thing. But inside, you know, I'm in God's will. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Would you want to be anywhere else? Would you rather have an easier life outside of the will of God or be in the will of God and sometimes you're going through some tests and trials? Everyone's looking a bit somber here. <laughs> would, I, would you rather be in the will of God and at times it's a bit tough? Not just, it could be a, an extended time. <laughs> or would you rather be out of the will of God? I'd rather be in the will of God. You could be in the will of God even right now. You could be listening to me today you could be in the will of God right now, but your finances are tight. But if you're in the will of God, you know somehow your daily bread is being met. You get your needs met. You know what? God has something even bigger in the future for you. You right now might be in the will of God and you might be single and long for the closeness of a spouse. But God provides the emotional security for you and empowers you to live pure and holy. You might be in the will of God right now and you feel vulnerable because you are in the process. You're quite broken. You're quite vulnerable. But the Father is empowering you not to seek the path of least resistance. Not to go for the false comfort. Not to compromise. You may not feel particularly in your great calling and purpose. But you're praying. You're serving. You're giving. You're loving people. And you have a settled peace in your heart that your life counts. So you've got to hear this sort of truth because this is going to settle you. You're in the will of God. And the reason why you've gone through everything you've gone through and you are going through is because who you are meant to be is not going, to, it's not being revealed yet. You are going to be put on display and revealed for who you are. But the outpouring's not here yet. It's coming. Well, that's when you shine. You're going to shine then. Now listen, you can shine now, so don't. it's not like, well, I just sit on the shelf. This is not sit on the shelf and be passive and be depressed. I haven't got my purpose, I haven't got my calling. No, you have. You're going to shine. You're shining now. There's something supernatural here. I don't know how this is working. We're pastors, we're not very, I don't know, I, I, we're, we're not very charismatic, we haven't got great speaking skills, we, we, we're not, I don't know, marked in this, I don't know, God is doing something just because there's hungry people. That's it. Just for hunger. Because there's a remnant. Your answers, listen, the answers for the things that you long for are in the outpouring. Your spouse is in the outpouring in the name of Jesus. Can I just say that? Some of you here are longing for a spouse. Well, your spouse right now might be in prison, dead in sin. Your spouse right now might be shooting heroin up to death. Your spouse right now might be in all kinds of trouble, but your spouse is in the outpouring. You're all of your, I mean, look, there's breakthroughs here today, but the breakthrough, you know it. You're, there's a pregnancy in your spirit. I've been born for something more than mediocrity, than just boredom. I want more. I'm groaning inwardly. The Holy Spirit groans inwardly. It's because it's in the outpouring. You know, there is an outpouring on the earth now. I believe it has begun. So, we walk in the will of God. We want to walk in the will of God. Let's look at some things about walking. Look, I want to walk in the will of God. And I just, 
very quickly look in the scripture. Lord, show me some things about walking in the will of God. Here's a few. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18 says, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God for you. In Christ Jesus. Is that the will of God? What's that saying is maintain your personal altar. Last year we did a series on priesthood. Where priests under the Old Testament it was only men were priests. We are priests. All of us in Christ. We need a personal altar. We have a corporate altar. Your personal altar gets strengthened by the corporate altar. You want miracles. You want God to break through in your life. You've got to strengthen your altar. In every season of your life, don't neglect your altar. People worship today because it feels good. Because it feels good. And it's great to feel good and, and worship God. And come into the house of the Lord and worship God. Because you've got a great testimony and God's done great things in your life. And you feel grateful. But you know when you don't feel like praising and worshiping. When you just rather just have a duvet day. Stay in bed. That's when you get up on a, on a Monday morning by yourself. And you say you know what God I'm going to bring you an offering today. Because we've got to think like priests and not like consumers. If you're a priest. You come before the altar of God and you bring an offering. And the first thing we offer is ourself. You've got to have an altar. If the altar is desecrated, if the altar is dusty, if the altar needs renewing, the altar has got to be cleansed. Here's another thing about walking in the will of God. For this is the will of God. This is something that's just not spoken about in the church at large. Despite the fact that it relates directly to one of the primary human instincts and appetites. All of us came into this world because of it. For this is the will of God. Your sanctification that you should abstain from sexual immorality. That each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honour. Not in passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. Now, this isn't Paul going on some great moral crusade. He's just saying, look, you need revelation from God. It's not easy. We need revelation from God to know how. That this body, you possess it. It doesn't possess you. In sanctification and honour. Not like those who don't know God. Who don't walk in covenant with God. That we abstain from sexual immorality. The word immorality is the word porneos. We know what we get from that word. And again, this is, look. And as believers, I remember when I was first saved. And I, I would reach out and do a lot of evangelism. And I had friends who were who were going on. I remember a friend going on with God who was in, from a homosexual background. And he was, a, he was a great guy. And you know what? He still struggled with those attractions. And when he went into church, this is in the mid-90s, and when he went into church and all he got was self-righteous rejection. So that's wrong. And it's like the pendulum can go both ways and what's happening today is wrong. But hear this, all of us here in this area have sinned in some way. All of us, there's not one of us, there's only Jesus was sexually pure, completely never sinned. And God wants to heal us in this area. I looked on that video there, did you see the deliverance? calling back the parts of her that were in those men and vice versa because we need the walk and the will of God I've seen people in this area backslide loads this is one of the main backsliding areas sexual immorality it's another subject any one of these areas is a subject in themselves that we could expand on and I, and I probably will and I won't advertise it on Facebook either or does it come to church we're having a revival on Sunday <laughs> and you know what nobody will be humiliated nobody will be exposed here's another one about the will of God not forsaken the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching in these end times we need to be part of a living local church in, in, I think it's in 2 Corinthians 
chapter 6, verse 16, 18, around there. It says, come out from among them. I will be your God. You will be my people. I will be a father to you. That's in the context of the local church. I'm not ashamed to say I love church. That's where the fatherhood of God is going to be found in church. Thank God for conferences. Thank God for ministries. Hello, you're not going to get an impartation of the Father on your life. That you could have in a New Testament church founded on the right foundations. That's where you're going to get the fatherhood of God. Because the Father builds family. Here's, here's one and, and I thought, oh Lord, do I have to share this one? This is from Malachi 3, 7 and 8. It says, return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you said, in what way shall we return? Now you've heard this in church, haven't you? Will a man rob God? And look, and, and maybe I have literally seen it. And you are in finger pointing. But the word, this, this is the word. Will a man rob God? Yet you've robbed me. But it, you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. Listen, this is another preach altogether, but very quickly. We want to be aligned with the will of God. And part of a huge part of our being aligned with the will of the Father in our relationships is in our finances as well. If we're not aligned in this area, when God has his time for you to step into your purposes, if your finances are not in the kingdom and you're in a mess, you can't move in the will of God, you're stuck. And people say, I've heard people say, oh, but that was the book of Malachi. That's the Old Testament. Listen, the book of Malachi talks about it rebukes, brings correction and instruction to husbands not loving their wives. It brings correction and instruction of priests who are corrupt, i.e. ministers. That's still relevant for today, isn't it? But the Malachi's teaching on that is still relevant for today. The Holy Spirit's teaching through Malachi. The Holy Spirit's teaching on this is still relevant for today. Because, listen, don't lose this. We're priests. We've been so C of E ified in this country. We don't understand worship fully. When we worship, we're bringing God an offering. It's not a physical altar. When you come before the corporate altar, part of the offering of your worship is finance. We don't live in an agrarian economy. You want to bring a bull to church next week? Fair enough. Fine. We're not going to sacrifice tongues. Please hear me. It's something that, from our sustenance, it's worship. It puts us in God's economy. And we can say, oh, but where is it in the new? Hebrews 7, 8. Listen, do we believe? Question. Do we believe that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead? Would you stake your soul on the truth that Jesus is risen from the dead? If you're a mother here, would you stake your children's life on the fact that Jesus is risen from the dead? Would you stake your finances on the truth that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead? Yes. Hebrews 7, 8 says, Here, in the earth realm, mortal men receive tithes, but there, in the spirit, he receives them, of whom it is witness that he lives the resurrected christ receives your tithe we don't tithe we say tithe is not for today jesus is still in the grave truth and you know what listen when you're in the will of god and people could be oh these finances finances when you're in the will of god and you start aligning yourself with the will of god be it I'm not going to go back to those silly relationships anymore. Right, I'm going to bring my finances into the will of God. It's like, next day, okay, Lord, where's the blessings? Where's that husband? Where's my wife? I've given up flirting around in silly relationships. Can I have a wife, please? Can I have a husband? It's kind of like, look, to get... We've lived our life in a Babylonian system here, and kingdoms here. And you get from one to the others to a valley. Yeah. And you start moving that way. And then it gets testing. And then it gets hard. And some people go, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> this is why I believe in biblical prosperity. 
I heard a man of God say, look, there's kingdom millionaires. And you might say, oh, you don't know what they went through. They went through that. <sighs> they come up the other side. Where it ain't their God. And you see people who've got a kingdom marriage. They had to die and go through that. I remember when I got saved and my life was a train wreck in this area. And I knew that God was saying to me, you've got to give all that up. If you want to have Jesus as your Lord, basically you are celibate, my son. For life. For life. Not like, oh, I'll make a deal with you, God. I'll follow you, Jesus, if you get me a wife in a few years' time. Because I'd still be one of those people that struggle, they're in and out of church. Because I've still got a, a big idol in my heart. Maybe I've been in this silly relationship and that silly relationship and fragmented and they're fragmented and God hasn't given me a wife the big things that we want we have to lay them down here's one and this is the, I just see there could be more but this one will help because I hope nobody's offended Proverbs 4.23 says guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life I want to be in the will of God. I want to guard my heart. I don't want to carry offense. I don't want to carry bitterness. And I tell you, nobody's in any kind of firing line this morning. But the word of God does expose our heart. It exposes my heart. We've got to trust him. So here we are. You're thinking, okay, I want the will of God. To the best of my conscience, I'm in the will of God. God is working in me to will and to act according to his good pleasure. This is not law. There's a lot of crazy teaching out there that says, look, if you ever hear anything in church that challenges your character, calls you to commit to God, oh, that's law, that's law. No, no, no. Do you know the word faith? The word faith, the Hebrew understanding of the word faith means to cleave to. Like a husband and wife cleave. It means covenant. You cleave to each other. And when you've been married for 5, 10, 15, 20 more years, you realize you really have had to cleave to each other. You've really had to cleave. That's faith. It's like everything in you has had to yield to that cleaving and not pull away from it. And look, if you've been pulled away from and you're broken God's going to touch you today so here we are maybe life's not too easy you've got some trials but you have the joy of a personal older maybe you're single but you've got the peace that you are set apart for God things may be tight for you but as a worshipper you're worshipping God with everything you are including your finances what's been happening all this time what, you think I'm obeying God and life's not been easy it's easier for them out there it's easier for the unsaved it seems for the wicked and the, you can hear this sort of thing in the Psalms even I know people who are Christians and not me to judge and they've got it easy here's me I'm going for God I I I remember, Lord, I remember in 1996, in that conference, in that powerful time, yeah, it was, I remember the song, I remember these days, delirious song. I want to be a history maker. Amen. Songs about revival and a call to consecration to give your whole life to Jesus, no matter what, to sign your life away, no matter what you're going to go through, so that you can be a carrier, a revival. And maybe you were... Maybe you were a kid. Maybe you were a teenager. Early 20s. Whatever you were. And you went forward and said, Lord, that's me. I want a God. Hallelujah. Give you my life. And here you are now. You see, what's happened in you is your remnant. And you are carrying. The, the, you felt empty even. You felt the pain of orphanhood at times. Wondering, where do I belong? Where do I fit? Because you are a misfit. That's why you go, you're a misfit. 
Because you're no more of this world than he is of this world. That's why. You're not part of the system. But what's happening is, listen, you have been, you are, you are a living sacrifice. And the presence, the real presence of God, this is how you, how the presence of God comes. The presence of God comes not through this or that or this or that. The system's still the same. It hasn't changed. It's a priestly, sacrificial system. Not blood of bulls and goats. And Jesus made the sacrifice on the cross for our sins. He's King of kings. He's Lord of lords. We are kings and priests. The presence of God comes on our sacrifice. That's true worship. As a living sacrifice if the presence of God is not tangible in a place it means there's no sacrifice fire only falls on sacrifice and that's what the father's been doing and is doing and in Jesus name he is clothing you He's been delivering you. Just lately, we just had a season of deliverance and of freedom. Of the heart being healed. Who's had their heart healed? Getting your heart healed. Getting your heart touched. You know you're not like a Gentile. We're not judging people like that. Don't be like those Gentiles who don't have a covenant and walk with God. You are bought with a price. And you know, when there's something in our heart that says, you know what God? Even if I am single for life, I'm going to worship you. I am going to worship you. This life of mine, this body of mine is a temple of the Holy Ghost. And I surrender it, everything to you. Even if I never see the dreams that I hope to see, I'm going to worship you. I am going to simply worship you. Because there's nothing like your presence and that's I heard a man say once if you worship God he'll give you anything you want which sounds like a is it an oxymoron it sounds crazy but true worship is the surrender of the ego the, the surrender of self and when that's gone everything you want then everything you, you long for in your heart just starts coming because you don't even want it anymore. Because you don't even want it. You just want him. And as you just want him, all this other stuff starts coming. Isn't that good? Just lift your hands to him right now. We're living in a day and age, you know, God is All of his promises are yes and amen. All of his promises are yes and amen. See a rumor in a frabacoon, a red fragam, or see Bereki, she get a bobo, Panande Frabaka. Hallelujah. Oh, Baba Renda Cabre de Sibaba is going to ask you to do some crazy steps of trust in him hallelujah you're not even your own you know if, if god raised jesus from the dead jesus went into that grave by faith his emotions he experienced death that is in himself he's saying i'm not sure i'm coming out of this i'm not sure i am going to get raised up he had to believe it by faith I tell you in the name of Jesus, you are remnant. I'm looking at remnant here in this room. You are called of God for a purpose. It's your life that's going to be so filled with the supernatural power and with the glory of God. Let's just stand up now and bring him that living sacrifice. And I tell you, there's this pain in your heart. There's pain, there's longings, there's been frustrations. I've carried pain and frustrations and in my life. Well, let's just worship Him. Shere ba 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 roma ba 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 kaya ne ba ba so niente ba. Lift up a spiritual song and let the old go. Let the old go. Let the old go. 
Ora baba rema pray de baba kose de ba. The fatherhood. You know the son of the father. It's hallelujah. Ora baba baka just. Hallelujah. Ora basi ya baba bare dare baka basho. Ora baba 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 kare dare baba she de baba ka. Sire de baba rendare baba ka. The father. I just want to say, I, I just, I just in my heart, I just feel such an honor for 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 everyone in this room because you're crazy enough to just believe, <laughs> just to still be going for it. Hallelujah! Glory to God! Oh, hallelujah! Sere baba re na re baba baba ka she ne ba re na re baba ka ra baba baka. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Sing this from the depths. Bring it. Bring that strong wind from. Hallelujah! He's making it new. He is making it new. He's making your life new. You have identity. You have purpose. Whoa, ba ba ba. Hallelujah, we glorify His holy name, His holy name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sing it, sing it, let it expand yourself. Just as you sing this, lift your hands up and expand yourself. Whoa. Let the straight, I just see your, ex, your spirit is expanding as you sing this song. Bring it from your diaphragm, bring it from down here, where the, from your belly, from your belly flows rivers of living water. Worship it with your whole being. Ex, let yourself expand in this. But what an honor to be a blood-washed saint of the living God and worship Him.